I have a question for you guys. What if two of the biggest problems in the world, sea level change and the lack of innovation in governance can be solved with one technology? The Seasteading Institute is a nonprofit think tank from Silicon Valley, co-founded by Peter Thiel, a philanthropist, co-founder of PayPal, and the first investor in Facebook, and Patry Friedman, an engineer at Google, a venture capitalist, and grandson of the Nobel Prize winning economist Milton Friedman. Seasteaders, like me, are a global community of nautical engineers, maritime attorneys, medical researchers, security personnel, and investors, and we plan to build politically independent cities that float on the ocean. And the question is, why? Why would seasteaders want to create a thousand startup nano nations on the sea? It's because humanity has discovered how to change the world. And it's not to seize that giant yellow monopoly and force a billion customers to live according to your plan. The way to change the world is to provide platforms for other people to try their plans and then see if they can coax people to move there. Arguments don't change the world. Startups change the world. How do we know this? That little red dot you see right there, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, because of historical accident, became in practice a startup government. In 1961, it was a British colony with British rule of law planted in a Chinese culture. So unprecedented in human history. And over the next 36 years, the wealth of the average person in Hong Kong, watch this slide, grew 87 times. Farmers who toiled in rice fields often put their kids straight into the professional class. Hong Kong started a trend toward what I like to call priesteds. Hong Kong's startup success so amazed Chinese rulers China designated the fishing village of Shenzhen to try a similar experiment in business freedom. So in 1979, uh, when it was designated a special economic zone, Shenzhen didn't even have a traffic light. And this is what happened in 25 years. So today, Shenzhen manufactures 90% of computer keyboards, 90% of computer mice, and 90% of Shenzhen's population are migrant workers. So people keep moving there because per person GDP is the highest in all of mainland China. Bam! China didn't waste any time. The success of Hong Kong and Shenzhen inspired China to create more legal islands all along the coasts close to the ocean. At least a half billion people escaped extreme poverty as they migrated to these special economic zones. So Hong Kong didn't conquer China. Hong Kong persuaded China peacefully. And the movement to create wealth with startup governance has only accelerated since. Dubai is the most recent and spectacular example that convinced me that anything is possible if you can start over with new rules. So Dubai set aside 110 acres, imported common law from England, planted it in a Muslim culture. Why did they do that? Well, Dubai had already learned that with the right rules, this picture can happen in 13 years. Skyscrapers on sand, which is so perpetually in flux, it's been described as building skyscrapers on floating rafts. And it was technically impossible until Dubai developed the business incentive to solve the technical challenge. 
So what is the wellspring of wealth for any country? Is it natural resources? Is it human talent? Is it all capital produced? Is it something mysterious we just don't understand? Nope. It's the source code. The World Bank figured this out 10 years ago. Exhaustive study determining what makes countries rich. The most valuable thing in the world is the rule of law you plant from which everything else sprouts. The greatest business opportunity in the world is startup countries. Patry Friedman and Peter Thiel bring a Silicon Valley sensibility to accelerating this process. You don't discover the most miraculous societies by trying one Hong Kong here, one Singapore over there, or even 30 free zones in Dubai. You need thousands of startup societies exploring the future, discovering the best ways of governing ourselves. As long as people can join them voluntarily and leave them voluntarily, we will engage a evolutionary market process and solutions will emerge that we can't imagine now. And the technology to do this currently exists. The prototype for the Seasteading Institute's floating island project already floats in the Netherlands. This is the floating pavilion in Rotterdam. It was built by our Dutch engineers at Blue 21. You can move it wherever it's needed. It's completely sustainable, it runs on solar, and it's not expensive in shallow waters. So the world leaders in environmentally sustainable floating real estate are on our team. And the world leader in legal innovation is on our seasteading team. Tom W. Bell is the author of The Next Step Beyond the Special Economic Zone, The Sea Zone, Special Legislation Taking the Best Practices that Have Been Discovered on More Than 4,000 Special Economic Zones and Applying Them for Maximum Wealth Creation on Innovative, Sustainable Floating Islands on the Sea. Tom W. Bell is also the author of the forthcoming book, Your Next Government? Question mark, from which this graph is taken. Okay, listen to me. Dubai is on the crest of this wave that has been sweeping the world and special economic zones have been so successful that more than 4,000 have proliferated across 70% of the world's countries and they are crammed up against the coasts as if against a dam. And this is where we detach and begin the colonization of the blue frontier. How would you like to found your own startup country? This is our chance to innovate at the foundation of society, which is the legal system itself. Imagine if the Palm Islands could detach from land and float. Imagine if these islands were environmentally sustainable. Imagine if these islands were modular, detachable. You can move them about, reassemble them according to the choices of the residents. Imagine if the United Arab Emirates could legislate unprecedented political autonomy for these islands. On this startup country, we could embody the environmental ideals of Mazdar City, the humanitarian achievements of Dubai Cares. Uh, Devi Shetty, Mother Teresa's former heart surgeon, has called for floating hospitals offering faster, better, affordable health care. Coastal countries from all over the world, threatened by sea level rise, come to us crying out for some way to adapt. Business leaders from all over the world come to us demanding new jurisdictions where they can create the 21st century. Innovators in aquaculture, in 3D printed construction, in medical research, blockchain technology, in drone research, all, they're frustrated by 20th century rules, they're banging on our doors, 
and they're saying, where's my seastead? Build it and they will come. Nobody else is doing this. Seasteading is a super brand. Uh, We hold an unfair advantage because of our network. Since 2008, the Seasteading Institute has been conducting research and building teams. We don't need to seek out partners. Industries come to us. Technologists come to us. Countries come to us. We can say to any coastal government in the world, we are taking the next step into more regulatory autonomy and we don't even need your land. We'll bring our own land. If our experiment in freedom works, we bring prosperity and blue jobs to your local people. If our business model fails, we take our modular seastead apart and float away. There's no risk to you. Smart countries like this deal, and we found a smart country with the vision to become the innovation hub of the blue economy. What if seasteading started in the most beautiful place on Earth, in some of the calmest waters on the ocean, among some of the nicest people in the world? This was the view from my dinner table in September. Our team of 10 traveled to Tahiti and met with the president of French Polynesia, his cabinet, and several government ministers and mayors. We gave a two-hour presentation about the legal innovations, engineering innovations, and the economic prosperity we plan to bring to French Polynesia. And when we were done, President Edward Fritch told us through a translator, quote, it would be wonderful if we can work with the Seasteading Institute to bring sustainable development and economic activity to French Polynesia. And he concluded, quote, let's create the future together. Throw out your calendars because year one of the aquatic age began on January 13th, 2017, when government ministers from French Polynesia traveled to San Francisco to sign our historic Memorandum of Understanding. Randolph Hankin, on the right, executive director of the Seasteading Institute, announced Blue Frontiers, our brand new company. Our mission is to sell sustainable, innovative, modular floating platforms with significant regulatory autonomy in the territorial waters of a host nation. And these floating communities will adapt organically to sea level change, and they will offer a, quote, unique governing framework, unquote, so people can experiment with new societies. We're gonna start small. This is what our Dutch engineers from Blue 21 designed for French Polynesia based on a local flower to honor the Polynesian culture. Blue Frontiers will create an environmentally sound, self-sustaining floating island, starting with two or three pilot platforms. And if we are successful, French Polynesia could become a leader in a brand new industry, exporting our technologies around the world. Our Dutch engineers at Blue 21 compiled this data. The orange dots are places experiencing rapid population growth. The blue dots are places experiencing rapid population growth plus risk of floods or sea level rise. These communities are our future customers. Blue Frontiers offers investor opportunities. Talk to me if you are curious. If you want to learn more, read my book co-written with Patry Friedman called Seasteading, How Floating Nations Will Restore the Environment, Enrich the Poor, Cure the Sick, and liberate humanity from politicians. I'm Joe Quirk, and I plan to see you on the Blue Frontier. Thank you for listening.